Hey, 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 it's me, Tiffany. Welcome to my channel where I share all things pregnancy, postpartum, and motherhood related. I'm a certified birth and postpartum doula, so that means I support women and their families on their journey from conception to postpartum. If you haven't had a chance yet, please check out my website at www.nurturebytiff.com where you can check out my doula services that I offer. You can check out my childbirth education courses, and you can check out my merch. Um, so this story is a story that I've been uh, following out of Portland and very devastating story a 19 year old father is being accused of taking his four-year-old son's life so i'm going to share the clip with you and come back and share my opinion on it about what investigators say happened according to a doctor who examined the child his injuries indicated severe abuse and meanwhile it was an emotional scene at the multnomah county justice center this afternoon when Ware was arraigned and that's where we find fox 12's adrian thomas who has been following this case adrian well, Pete, Nora, the family, uh, the boy's mother and other family member tell us the four-year-old's name is Jordan Clay, and he died yesterday at Emanuel Hospital. His father, Marquavius Ware, was arrested shortly after. Now, those new court documents also revealing tonight that Jordan Clay died because of blunt force trauma, and doctors who examined him said, because, uh, apart from severe bruising all over his body, he appeared to be malnourished and dehydrated. Family members we spoke with earlier today are stunned, heartbroken, and searching for answers because they say authorities could have prevented this tragedy. Marquavius Ware appeared in a Multnomah County court Thursday to face charges in the murder of his own son. The family sharing these photos of four-year-old Jordan. His mother, Janicia Clay, says he was a sweet boy who was her best friend. One of her sisters gave an emotional statement in the courtroom. Once Ware's future court date was set, things became heated when a boy Jordan's family say is Ware's younger brother appeared to taunt Janicia. The interaction spilled out into the streets outside the Multnomah County Justice Center, and deputies stepped in to defuse the situation. After Jordan's mother, Janicia, spoke and explained how she allowed Jordan to go stay with Marquavius Ware on Easter Sunday, but it was the last time she saw him. She says for the past few weeks, Marquavius kept Jordan from her, and she noticed signs of abuse over a FaceTime call, which she took photos of and showed to police. I took a FaceTime photo of his face. I noticed marks. Instantly, I called the police. They told me call non-emergency because it's his father. But I was like, he's been in my care for the last four years. My son is really in danger. Like, there's marks on his face. Janicia says she tried to get Portland police involved and get a restraining order filed against Ware, but had no luck. Jordan's great-grandmother expressing outrage over how the family says authorities handled the situation. They went to the house and told them and came back and reported that Jordan was fine, but he was not fine. We all know Jordan. He's hyper. He don't sit in one spot for a very long, ever. Janicia and all of her family say they're hoping Ware gets the harshest penalty possible. I want him in jail for the rest of his life. If you can't tell, he's a menace to society, okay? Folks, I need justice for my son. And those court documents also revealing new disturbing details tonight, saying uh, Wednesday afternoon after Ware found Jordan uh, Clay having a seat, appearing to be having a seizure in an upstairs bathroom, Ware's younger brother uh, called 911. The court documents also saying Ware was heard yelling at Clay the night before. Live in downtown Portland, Adrian Thomas, Fox 12, Oregon. Very disturbing story. Adrian, thank you. So, um, that was the clip. And I feel really bad for the mother because from my understanding, um, she was trying to get help, trying to get her son from him, but they wouldn't, authorities wouldn't allow her to do so because he is the child's father. In his day and age, I don't care if it's the mom, I don't care if it's the dad, I don't care if it's uncle, grandma, whoever. If it, someone calls, you know, the police or the authorities and say that they feel like their child is in some type of danger, even if they're with another, you know, parent or whatever, I still feel like that those calls should be taken seriously. Because we've seen time and time again where you have a parent who is neglecting their child, abusing their child, doing something 
you know, horrible to their own child. It doesn't make a difference if it's a step parent or a biological parent. You have sick and twisted people out here who are doing things to these innocent children. And, you know, this stuff doesn't need to be taken lightly. You know what I'm saying? Like you reach out to authorities to get help, to get reinforcement. And the fact that, you know, the mother and the family themselves feel like, you know, they were failed when they tried to reach out to get help. This speaks volumes. You know what I'm saying? Like we reach out you know, two people. And this isn't the first time something like this has happened. You know, you have, um, you know, social workers and people like that who have failed at removing children from homes and bad situations. And the outcome is, is, is a horrible one. You know, um, I'm just, I'm not sure where we're going in this world where parents constantly are taking their, their children out. I know this boy was adorable, cute little fella. Like, and for you to be abused, allegedly, by your father, you know what I'm saying? I just, I know that things like this go on, you know what I'm saying? But it's just so, so hard, you know? You got four-year-olds, two-year-olds, three-year-olds, one-year-olds that, you know, this stuff is happening to, and why i don't i don't i'm not understanding you know i hope that this family does get justice i hope you know that this father um gets whatever it is the book thrown at him or whatever because this is ridiculous what did that child do to you absolutely nothing you know um the mother seemed like she was just you know distraught terrified you know i'm not really sure what the history is between the two of them um but i'm pretty sure it's not a good one you know what i'm saying um, I just hate that the authorities did not take her concerns, you know, seriously. They did not allow the mom to go and get her baby because maybe this outcome would have been different if they would have took her seriously. You know what I'm saying? Um, sad story. And I just wanted to get on here and, you know, share this with you all. So what are your thoughts on this? Do you, do you think that, you know, things could have been done differently? Um, how are you all feeling about this out there? I thank you so much for watching and I'll catch you on the next one.